Hello dear students, I am Dr. Madhuri Goswami and in today's lesson we are going to study punctuation in English. We will take up a bit different approach in this lesson as we will have an ice breaking session in the beginning of this lesson and in that session we will have a short quiz. After the quiz we will discuss what does the punctuation mean, why do we need punctuation, how many types of symbols and signs of punctuations are there in English? In fact, when we talk about punctuation, it's related to our writing skills. Because when we speak, we can express our emotions and feelings and thoughts by using intonation and voice modulation and we can convey our thoughts quite clearly. But when we write something, we do need punctuations to make our thoughts clearly conveyed to our readers. So, it's an important trait that you need to know if you want to really improve your writing skills. Did you know the capitalization is also the part of punctuation? Where we should use the letters in capital and where we should not. This also we will learn during this lesson. So, be ready and take the quiz first and learn all about the punctuation and the rules to be followed. Dear students, if you don't know much about punctuation in English, don't worry. This quiz will give you an idea at least. If you are not able to do the questions rightly or correctly, don't worry at all. This is actually the ice breaking session of this lesson. So be relaxed and take the quiz. The first question is, a sentence has now you have three options. The first option is a full stop. The second option is a capital letter. And the third option is a full stop and a capital letter. You just think of the answer and keep it with you. The second question is always capitalize. Now you are supposed to tell what. The first option is the pronoun I. Second option is the first letter of the pronoun we. And the third option is every word in a sentence. Now let's see what's the third question. Do you study English? Is it correct? Just check is it written correctly? If it's not correct then what should be the corrections? The answers to these questions we will check at the end of this lesson so now you just write down the answers what you think it should be and then please check at the end of the lesson. So dear students, what does this quiz indicate? It indicates the use of the punctuation marks in written English and at the same time it checks your ability to use the basic punctuation marks correctly. Well let's know now. What is punctuation? The English language has a system of symbols and signs known as punctuation. Now, why do we need punctuation? It seems a good question. But before answering it, let me ask you a riddle. Are you interested? There is a sentence written over here. Who declared the COVID-19 a pandemic? What do you understand by this sentence? Its answer is WHO declared the COVID-19 a pandemic. So what do you understand? What's this sentence? It's a statement or it's a question? The thing is, it's the punctuation mark at the end of the sentence that tells us whether it's a statement or a question. Otherwise, it's quite confusing. We cannot know, we cannot say that it's that question or its answer. Because in both of them, the same words are there. If we put the full stop at the end of this sentence, it's a statement. And this WHO means the World Health Organization. But if we put the question mark at the end of this sentence, then it's a question, it's asking something and this WHO word is the simple WH word WHO. I hope it's crystal clear 
This is the need of the punctuation in written English. At the same time, there should be the proper capitalization because in this sentence, you just notice every word is written in capital. So we cannot assume that this WHO stands for the World Health Organization or it's just a simple WH word, a question word. Let me introduce 14 principal punctuation marks in English language. The first, the full stop or the period. Second, the question mark or the interrogation mark. Third, the exclamation mark or the exclamation point. Fourth, the comma. Fifth, the colon. Sixth, the semicolon. Please notice the difference between the symbols of these two punctuation marks. Seventh is dash. There are two types of dash, n dash and m dash. Eighth, the hyphen. Ninth, the parentheses. Tenth, the brackets. Eleventh, the braces. 12th, the apostrophe. 13th, the quotation marks. They can be single or double. 14th, can you identify this symbol? The symbol of these three dots. This symbol is known as the ellipsis. The first three symbols or punctuation marks on this list, the full stop, the question mark, or the exclamation mark, these have been placed in the first category and that is known as the terminal punctuations. Because they are used at the end of a sentence, so they terminate, they end that sentence, that's why they are known as terminal punctuation marks. In the second category, we put comma, colon and semicolon and they are known as pause punctuations because they are used when we pause for a brief time in a sentence, then we use these three punctuation marks. There are some other punctuation marks which are also included in this category like the M dash and the ellipsis, but mainly we include these three punctuation marks in this category. In the third category, we have dash and hyphen on the basis of their similar appearance. But use them carefully as they are different in their size of length and uses. And in the fourth category, we have parentheses, brackets and braces. These punctuation marks are used to give, provide additional information. And they have some other names as per their shapes. As parentheses is known as round brackets, brackets are called as square brackets and the braces as the curly brackets. And in the fifth category, we have apostrophe, quotation marks and ellipses. The apostrophes and the quotation marks are stuck flying around the word, whereas the ellipses are placed at the bottom of the letters. The ellipses, it's used for the omission. So in this way, these 14 principal punctuation marks in English language they have been divided into five categories on the basis of their functions, their uses and sometimes for their appearances. I hope with this introduction, they will retain in your memory for longer. In the next part of this lesson series, we are going to learn more about these punctuation marks and their uses in detail. So stay tuned for the next lesson. Thank you for joining. Happy learning!